Blood sugar and insulin are not the same thing and each can have their own issues. In this video, I share with you the difference in how it can affect your treatment. I'm Dr. Jake. I'm a naturopathic physician and on this channel, I share with you how you can heal your body down to the root causes without any harmful drugs or surgery. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. Okay, let's jump in. Yeah, so let's start talking about what is blood sugar and what is insulin, right? So blood sugar is when you eat something, your blood sugar increases, especially if you eat carbs, or even if you eat protein, your body will break that into sugar. And that goes into your bloodstream. And then hopefully it will get into your cells. And that is what insulin does. So we don't want sugar hanging out in our bloodstream all the time, because that could cause problems. So that's blood sugar. But then what actually takes the blood sugar into the cell, it's insulin. So that's produced from your beta cells in your pancreas. Insulin is released in response to elevation of blood sugar. And then the sugar goes into the cell if the cell is healthy. So that's the balance between it. Your blood sugar goes up, you make insulin, blood sugar goes down, you stop making insulin. It's a fine balance in between that and your body works perfectly with that when everything's working right. But when things aren't working right and the cells don't work well or your insulin's not working well, that's when havoc breaks loose. So let's talk about what are blood sugar issues that are completely different than insulin issues. So first one I wanna talk about is when your cells become desensitized to insulin. So this is also referred to type two diabetes. This is not an insulin issue at all at this point. It's your cells actually throughout your entire body getting lazy and not being able to receive the signal from your insulin. It's a membrane issue, a cellular membrane type of cellular dysfunction, which is making it not communicate appropriately with insulin. So we're not able to get sugar inside our cells appropriately for energy production. So let's talk about like the nuances that happen when you do have type two diabetes. So in the very beginning, your body is desensitized to the insulin. You're not able to get sugar in because of that, but your body compensates by making more insulin. Okay, it's desensitized. I'm going to make more. I'm going to put more signals on that cell so there's more sugar that's able to get into there. And that happens for years and years and years. But your pancreas, over time, the beta cells start to break down because they're being overworked. They're producing way too much insulin. So when you look at a type 2 diabetic, their insulin levels start to go really, really high. And that's when you're starting to see, okay, yeah, they have type 2 diabetes. And they're going to probably, if we don't get this under control, they're probably going to have to depend on insulin in the future because the beta cells are going to get tired or they're not going to make insulin appropriately. And that is when type two diabetics absolutely have to depend upon insulin. But there's a lot of doctors that just prescribe extra insulin to get sugar in because they're not able to manage it any other way. And insulin is the best way to do it. But many times it's used because the patient isn't producing insulin well anymore. But another blood sugar issue that can happen is that your body releases too much sugar from your liver in response to too much cortisol being made, which is related to someone being stressed out all the time. And it's going to make your blood sugar high all the time. So you're going to have, okay, blood sugar goes up, insulin is produced, takes it in. But your blood sugar is going to continuously be up and up and up because you keep on making cortisol all the time or be high. So you could get a test done like a hemoglobin A1C or a spot blood sugar test or whatever. And if you have high cortisol all the time, you're going to show that you have high blood sugar. And it's really all it is related to is your stress response. It's that cortisol dysregulation that's happening in your body. It's not that you have type 2 diabetes, even though many doctors could possibly say, hey, you have pre-diabetes. When you have stress issues, it's not going to be like, oh, you have full-blown diabetes, but you will look like you have pre-diabetes. And then over time, that will lead to the decreased sensitization of your cells and lead to type 2 diabetes in the future. So those are two big causes of that with blood sugar. Another one I want to talk about is we were talking about high blood sugar. Let's talk about low blood sugar. So this can be related to the cortisol too. So it's adrenal issues that are going on is you could get to a point that you can produce too much cortisol too quickly and then the cortisol goes down. So you make cortisol, you pump out the sugar, and then your body makes too much insulin in response to that and then that drops your blood sugar. So then you get hypoglycemia. 
So that's a common thing that I see with people that have adrenal dysfunction is they get hypoglycemia very easily. It's because they adrenal glands aren't producing cortisol appropriately. They produce too much at certain times of the day, and then the blood sugar drops drastically in response. So let's talk about insulin issues that have nothing to do with blood sugar issues, okay? So let's talk about one is when the immune system, for some reason, goes and attacks the pancreas. So it goes and attacks those beta cells that make insulin. So then this leads to your body not being able to make enough insulin. So this is type one diabetes. This usually occurs when you're younger, like younger than teenage age. Typically it can happen later, but that's when it typically happens. And at that point, you're not making insulin anymore. So then you're not getting that signal on your cells anymore to take sugar into your cells. So then you get way high blood sugars, like very scary blood sugar levels. You get go into what's called ketoacidosis because your body's just breaking down your fat and it leads to all kinds of problems. And this is when people absolutely need to depend on insulin. So they need to take the drug form of insulin. There's several different forms, Levermere and other forms every day to manage the blood sugar. So that's an insulin issue. So let's talk about type two diabetes is a blood sugar issue, but really going back to really what it is, it's a cellular issue. Your cells are not sensitized to insulin anymore and you can't take that sugar in. So you do get high blood sugar in response to that, but it's a cellular blood sugar issue. And type one diabetes is completely related to insulin not working right. In type two diabetes, insulin's working just fine. In type one, you're not making the insulin in response. So in type one, you have no cellular issues. In type two, you have cellular issues bringing in the sugar from your cell and you have high blood sugar because of that. So let's talk about another insulin issue that people might have. This is similar to type one in diabetes, but it's being given a different name because it's referred to as what's called LADA. It's kind of a newer diagnosis that we're coming up with but there are adults that are like in their 30s and 40s, maybe in their 50s, that are later getting diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's not the same as type 1, though. It's not like as severe, typically. It's not like this big trauma happens to the beta cells and just gets the beta cells all gobbled up and not working, and it causes a ton of ketoacidosis. It's slow. It's gradual. So your blood sugar just slowly goes up and up and up, and you're like, man, I'm doing everything right, but my blood sugar is still off. Like I'm running, I'm biking, I'm eating right, I'm eating a low carb diet, etc. And then blood sugar keeps going up. It's because the autoimmune response is happening, but it's less severe and it's a completely different diagnosis and it acts differently than type 1 diabetes. We call that LADA, latent autoimmune diabetes of adult. So that's another condition that can happen with insulin. So let's talk about one more insulin issue. And it's not a high blood sugar issue. It's actually a low blood sugar issue. It's when you're making way too much insulin in response to food. And usually this is called a insulinoma. It's a tumor that can be on your pancreas and you're making too much insulin. It's just like producing insulin all the time and your blood sugar goes way too low. So there's people that eat carbs. And their pancreas just goes crazy and produces way too much insulin response. And then you go hypoglycemic. And many times people that have this disease is like, oh, I need to eat a lot of sugar. And actually that makes it worse. So you need to eat more protein, fat, et cetera, to decrease that. But that is another insulin issue that people have is they make too much insulin in response to carbs. So insulinoma is your body's just making too much insulin all the time. And that's causing your blood sugar to be low. But there's the other people that produce too much insulin in response to sugar. So not everyone has this response, but it is common for people that are eating a lot of sugar to go hypoglycemic. But yeah, so for you, you're producing too much insulin response to sugar. Your pancreas produces too much insulin when you do have carbohydrates. So your pancreas isn't working the same as I would say the average normal pancreas. So let's talk about like, can someone have an insulin issue and a blood sugar issue? And yeah, that's kind of diving into what we just discussed a little bit of before is someone could have type two diabetes, their cells are becoming desensitized to insulin, but then over time, the pancreas gets tired because it's producing too much insulin. And then now that they don't have good insulin response and they're not producing a lot of insulin and now they absolutely need to depend on insulin. So that's a combination of insulin and cellular dysfunction that can happen with people. Also what can happen with type two diabetics 
is they can start going hypoglycemic. So their pancreas starts to make too much insulin in response to sugar. That's very common. You could be like, oh, pumping way too much and your blood sugar could go low. So you could have high blood sugar, then low blood sugar, high blood sugar, and then low blood sugar. And that tends to be like, okay, that's getting to the point that your pancreas is going to stop shutting off, start shutting off insulin production, and you need to really get things under control. Yeah, so let's talk about are there different symptoms with someone that has a blood sugar issue or someone that has an insulin issue? There are differences, but many times people don't really notice anything except for the type 1 diabetic. That person is going to be extremely ill, fatigued, fainting, vomiting, needing to go to the hospital immediately. Many times they go into ketoacidosis really quick, and that's when they're first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. They're a young kid. They could be six years old, and they're dealing with this, and then they check their insulin levels, their blood sugar levels, and then their insulin levels in the hospital, and then they make the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. But the latter and the type 2 diabetes they are going to be very similar. You're not going to really have a ton of symptoms until your blood sugar start getting really high. At that point, LATA and type 2 diabetes are going to have similar symptoms that you're going to start losing weight, you're going to be thirsty all the time, and you're going to be peeing a lot. Those are the symptoms of LATA and type 2 diabetes. Now, hypoglycemia, completely different symptom picture if you're having that. When your blood sugar gets low, those people are going to be experiencing jitteriness, irritability, fatigue and headaches. So yeah, a lot of different symptoms that could go along with what type of blood sugar issue you have. So what labs do I order to really identify what type of blood sugar that you have? Do you have an insulin issue or a blood sugar issue, right? So big thing we want to do is first we're going to do a fasting blood sugar and we're going to be able to see where your blood sugar is at. And we want that to be 70 to 100. If you have a fasting blood sugar that's in that range, we're not going to be really concerned. We also want to order many times, and I don't know why many doctors don't order this in a basic lab test because it should be there, is a hemoglobin A1C. This checks your blood sugar over a four-month period of time. So we're able to get a real good look at what's happening in your body. And if that's below 5.7, it's normal. You're great. You're good. But if it's 5.7 to 6.4, we call it pre-diabetes. And if you're above 6.5, we call that full-blown diabetes. Either it could be type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, et cetera. And then what we're going to want to do, if we do see there's some blood sugar issues, we're going to be like, okay, what's going on? Is it type 1? Is it type 2? What is it? So we're going to order insulin. And also we want to order what's called a C-peptide to see how the insulin is working. Are you making too little? Or are you making too much insulin? And that gives us a good look at what's happening in your body. Yeah. So if you want to get a hold of me, visit my website, www.integrativemedica.com. You could call my receptionist and set up an appointment that way. You also could set it up directly from our website. If you want to learn more about blood sugar and insulin resistance, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.